Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Yuri Geltz. No, it's good evening, guys. Uh, it's morning somewhere. Welcome, everyone, to my Thursday subscriber stream here on Leechess and Twitch. Intro National Master and Ponda Keeper. So we'll get back to Budapest soon to get the original Ponda back on the stream. These guys, I don't know if they're coming with me. Maybe the little guy. Oh, no, I don't want to be here by myself. What's up, everyone? Welcome to our subscriber stream on Thursdays. We're going to be doing game analysis. Um, hopefully, the Twitch properly. Yesterday, we had some issues. The Twitch D looks to be good. All right, guys, ready to get started? I've got... Um, I had a list here somewhere. There it is. We have our list. Professional radio show we do here. Um, Acerbade Move 11. And then very suspiciously, Uber Driver and Merle submitted their... What a coincidence that Uber Driver and Merle submitted their their game analysis uh, suggestions next to each other in the list. Coincidence? I don't think so. But they were separated by an hour, according to the email list or the message list, which I found interesting. Um, Dr. Jekyll takes an hour to turn into Mr. Hyde, but <clears throat> then uh, Uber Driver, Merle, and uh, someone on sound. I think there are five, only five thus far. Usually we get some, some late we get some late submissions for game analysis for the stream. Well, there's Merle now. So Uber is actually first, Merle. So I hope you have your Presto change -o potion. Actually, that reminded me, what was that? What was that cartoon? Was it Tom and Jerry? Where the, there was a Tom and Jerry cartoon from the old school days. That was one of my favorite Tom and Jerry cartoons. Aster B probably knows that one. Where Tom and Jerry have to like live in the Dr. Jekylls. Am I confusing things? There's like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde character. Maybe I'm getting confused. But anyway, it's time to get started. All right, Aster Bait is first. He made a couple of submissions. I think he changed his mind as to which game he actually wanted to go over. Let's see what he's got for the latest one. Good afternoon, Merle. What's up, everybody? We're going to be doing game analysis with subscribers here on the stream. Asturbate, asturbate, asturbate. <clears throat> asturbate, check. No, 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 that's not it. Second Thursday submission. Is this the day? Let's see, today is is the fourth Thursday. No, we've got 31 days in the month, so it's the fourth Thursday. So this is his resubmission. All right. Oh, defense by me playing black. Let's get started. And I'm waiting here, guys, because I tend to get kind of slow about the early games and have to catch up later on. Um, I think it's better if I just stay on top of things from the beginning. All right. So this is Javad Slacks against Acerbate, 1704 versus 1675. Andromeda, oh, Andromeda is the, the fluorescent green color name. I can never read that. What's up? Thank you guys for supporting the stream. Andromeda and Jim both donated 300 bits this week, so I'd like to give a shout out to them. Hopefully our stream is good. We're going to be going over some subscriber submitted games. Just enjoying a beer here. Look at this ten upon loss. Eleven, nice. Look at that. This eleven. He used like a Texas Instruments calculator to go over the game. Basically, I'm just kidding. All right. Do you remember Texas Instruments computers? My my memory serves me. They're they're around like in the late seventies. Java slacks against Astrobe with eleven ten upon loss. Inaccuracies, no mistakes, no blunders. If you play too many games like this, people are going to start accusing you of being a computer. So you better only have a game like this every you know, 50 games or so. Um, all right, guys, let's get started. So Astrobate's black off the board. So it's e4, b6, and then uh, knight f3. So this, yeah, this looks familiar. All right. So knight f3 bishop e7. I mean, knight f3 isn't as incisive as d4. I think it's important for white to take this opportunity to quote unquote like punish black for playing the quiet b6. Let's get those numbers up. I agree, Bob. I agree, Bob. Yeah, we need a bit battle for the week. Um, 
Um, it's here already, and we haven't had too many, you know, donations this week. I've been a little out of sorts and under a lot of pressure, so to help relieve the stress, we need huge donations. <laughs> e4, f3, bishop e7. Feel free, you know, to let, let loose with the gift, the gift subscriptions this week. Um, problems. This sounds like Scooby Doo. I'm talking like Scooby Doo now. Rut row. A cartoon in a cartoon mood like Astrobate. Welcome, Percy Hepworth. Merle Dixon donated 100 bits to get it started. Get the bidding started. Merle Dixon in third place for the week. It's already Thursday. 1080 pixels is too much for my terrible internet. Um, It's too much for mine, too. I'd like to do like five pixels. Uh, all right, so E4 and Percy Hepworth, Merle Dixon, Astrobate. I didn't really read everyone. I'm just getting right into into things. Um, again, I, I don't like Knight F3 as much as D4. White plays Knight D3 and then Knight F6. Um, so I 6 is kind of more experimental. I mean, it seems to me like the main idea here is to play E6 and then quick Bishop E4 in that way putting pressure on the E4 pawn. We had a game like this on the stream where I was white the other day, actually. After e6, d4. Kind of a classic variation. Um, I think I've even... Yeah, let's see. d4. I mean, if white does something position like a3, you'd have to transfer to maybe like a Sicilian, I think would be the best. But Chom Ishtvan. Every time the domino I played was a draw. <laughs> we have like eight draws. Uh, and they're the size of games. All right, knight c3, knight f6. We just let it draw. This is experimental, though. It's kind of a cross and a hybrid, you might say, between uh, the open defense and the Aliukin. Aliukin. Bob's here. Turkey Farm's here. A lot of subscribers in the house. JCS, thanks for joining us. Um, so, cool move, though. I mean, objectively, probably not as good as um, Nix, but I think it's interesting. Um, now, we play d3. But I just want to mention, like, the critical line here, e5. And be careful, because I think knight e4, there's a move here, knight e2, which I tried in the few games where this happened. But after this, then this kind of stuck. I mean, I it's going to have to go to a very awkward place. It's going to have to go through, like, e5 in order to, to live, basically. Getting get into a really weird situation with something like h6, h4. And the knight have any squares, Astrobate, so be careful. Maybe not B4. I don't know what to suggest to you here. B4 is next. It's so weird. Look at this line. Look at this line. E6, D3. Talk about Wednesday. This variation, man. I mean, that night is not a happy camper. You know, I, I can't camp chess. I don't want to go back to camp chess again. Night C5, man. Where are we going? We're <laughs> to go back. There. Just not happy at all. So, someone on sound needed 500 bits to get the bit battle for the night and the week started. No, not someone on sound. I'm sorry. It was Andromeda 3. I'm totally discrediting. Crediting the wrong person. The green fluorescent name. I'm so sorry. Andromeda 3. You don't need I can't even say the right person, but thank you so much. Um, I cannot read the green fluorescent name, but I meant to say Andromeda 3. So thank you for supporting the stream. Big leader for the week is Andromeda 3. All right, guys. Anyway, this is all just speculation. It never happened. I mean, like just securing e4. It's kind of a passive move. But that's all right. I think they'll up with something like g3, bishop g2, and play a king's in an attack type position. Okay, so anyway, Aster Bay played e6. Wade plays bishop g5. This is a bad move, right? This is just a bad move. Um, I'm going to have to go answer the phone just because my mom will answer it, if not. Yeah, 
please don't do that again because it's it's like I'm trying to get my mom to take a nap. So if you call our house, then um, then you're gonna like cause my mom to wake up, which is gonna make it more difficult for me to stream. So not a good idea. Not a good idea, my friend. Um, Bishop G, Bishop E7. Not the best time to call me. All right, I don't like this move at all. Bishop G5, we got we got pawn the white square, so white should try to keep the keep the bishop. You know, on the board, basically, not knock this guy off. 500 bit donation. What are you to call, call the shot? Are you serious? How do they know you can call? Oh, oh, if anyone donates 500 bits, I will call the house and you'll hear that ring lives. Oh my god, I can't believe that, dude. You're you're advertising my you're advertising my information <laughs> for bits. That's better than that's better than no. How much do they call? How much do you pay for men for your telephone line? <sighs> yeah, dude, sorry. Um, I totally didn't see it. I don't know whether to say thank you or another you, but welcome, welcome, um, Bishop, Bishop E seven. Um, interesting idea. So you're you're creating some new. <laughs> okay, it stopped ringing after the third ring. I think, but they do that all the time, though, from telemarketing. So bishop e7, um, I don't like bishop g5 with a very bad move. D4, whoa. Well, this is really weird because, you know, I think Astrobate had another game I saw where almost the same exact thing happened. What is the chance of that? That's crazy. I mean, he literally had a very similar similar game I saw, he had something like e5 happen, and then moved his knight to g4, but this is different. Astrobate, is this the same opponent as I played the other game that I saw, or is this a different guy? Or gal? Um, yeah, raise the price next time, definitely. I'll turn down the ringer to make it, like, less loud, so it doesn't wake up my mom. She's not sleeping yet, but I was hoping she would take a nap, because it makes it easier. All right. Do with the Owens. I mean, honestly, like this type of thing, D three and G five is is uh is extremely rare. I mean, it doesn't really have a sense for White to do that. There's some sort of demented logic to it. So what D four. I'll be more. It'll be worth more if you freak out and get pissed off about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. All right. I'll try to be more angry next time, Bob. D4, just dropping a pawn. Takes it. We're just up a pawn here. I mean, this is just baby stuff. Knight D4, Bishop D4. Thank you very much. And now Queen E2 trying to cast the Queen's side. Not a bad practical decision by your opponent. Not a bad practical decision. I mean, you're down a pawn for nothing. I think managing the game, like, as such, um, is not a bad idea. This is a really tough decision for Acerbate here to retreat the bishop, play d play c. So f5, um, take on f3. I think we're taking on f3. I don't know if you consider queen b4 check, but that's probably not great. You have to calculate a little bit. Like bishop, queen b4 check, c3, bishop takes f3. <clears throat> um, and then if queen takes f3, queen takes b2. So we probably see queen b4 check, c3, bishop takes f3, g takes f3, when the black queen has three, and um, you're up a pawn. So I, I think this is the legit for black. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It simplifies the game to some extent, and white cannot take back with the queen without b losing a lot of stuff with tempo. So basically this... And then you just go back to a good square, whatever, maybe e e7. It's hard to believe when White has enough compensation in this simplified position that the engine sees this queen e We have to watch out there. It'd have to be queen d6, which is a little bit weird. But pawn up is pawn up. Pawn is pawn. You f5. Definitely not a bad move. Um, let's see what happens. So knight d2, retreating and dropping the c2 pawn. Um, what's up, guys? 
All right. So I think this is a good spot not to be greedy. Obviously, bishop takes c2, rook c1. He could try to target the c7 pawn. Probably worth calculating, though. I don't know how far you looked at this. Bishop takes c2, rook c1. I try to imagine that position. You don't really have a good retreat square. You have to go to a4, which is extremely awkward. Rook takes c7. But maybe the truth of the matter is that this is somehow better for black. Practical. Castles is, is okay. Um, you know, I think in a blitz game, I would just like retreat my bishop probably and just play, play it. Anyway, let's see what Asterby did. So, queen before. Speculative. Now, white could castle queen side. Does c3. And that doesn't work. Just snap the pawn. This is not the first time I asked to grab this pawn in this type of position. That's weird. He's basically found another game he had. So now you're up two pawns for no compensation. Um, rook d1. It looks like three. Can can I? Do I hear three? We've got three. Three. If it's three, it's for me. Welcome everybody. It's our subscriber stream. Um, Thirteen viewers thus far. We just got started. So let's get some people in the house. Get some get some bits flying for non telephone callers. Just for free. All right, so f3, you're off a million pawns. Great b5, totally winning position. Let's see if he did anything wrong. Oh, this was the game where he had the low center pawns. Yeah, nice. Basically, I think Asterbate's just getting better and better. Um, a couple months ago, you know, he was he was doing crazy stuff, playing really wildly. Um, I think he's really toned down in a good way. He's still playing aggressively, but he's toned his game down in a good way. He's playing more principally. So I think we're seeing an Asterbate who's in rating points in the last six months basically he's gone like 1300 to close to 1700 he's going to be outranking bob soon 10,000 bits for continuous calls until my numbers blow um i don't think i want to experience that castles here bishop e2 how many calls yeah that's like what is that commercial yeah tootsie pop or whatever how many Calls does it take to get to the center of of your call being blocked? Man, this is all pawns. The pawn pawn miser pawn miser um, and the same pawns castles. He just drops everything. All right, it's time to resign. It's over. No, anyway, he just did the sensible thing and like dropped his queen for nothing. I would probably play the same way. We're flying through this. Nothing to see here, folks. Just move along. Plus 30. <laughs> then the inaccuracy of g4. It doesn't really matter anymore. So why is queen d4 check not an option? It's also strong. But I love the efficiency with which Acerbate is playing. Now it's made in 10, apparently. He missed it, queen d4. This is any. I mean, you're just crushing this guy. Knight takes g3. You played it the best move. I mean, it almost seems kind of random, but, you know, you're losing material otherwise, so. What's up, Framsjert? 100,000 bits for a huge pizza. That I would go for. Actually, I didn't eat dinner yet, so. Queen bee check. Definitely. Would, would go for that, but the pizza barrage. Queen B2 check, King G1. Where's the mate? He found G4, but it's no good. And you found the mate in one. Nice job. So, awkward. Yeah, we could live with awkward, right? Sadly, there's no pizza hut where I live. I would prefer that. I would prefer that to, like, Domino's. Um, I don't like Papa John's. You guys, we have Papaginos. That's better than Papa John's, but it's uh, kind of a New England. I don't know how far and wide they're spread in New England. But... All right, that's it. Good job, Asterbate. But don't talk about unless somebody's donating 100,000 bits. What's up next? Um, move 11. I just see Move 11 here. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's playing tonight. So Move 11 is playing in a team league in New York City. 
Thin crust Pizza Hut is workable. Yeah, sadly, there was a Pizza Hut. It's like, isn't that isn't that like a refrain from a Talking Head song? Or is it just my imagination? I I don't know where I got this from. There was this Talking Head song from the eighties. Like it used to be a parking lot, and I think in a Dream or something, I turned that that into Pizza Hut. There used to be a Pizza Hut. Now it's all covered in flowers. Right, but there was a Pizza Hut. They took it out like 15, 12 years ago. But I never understood why. They did good business. Now Pizza Hut is coming back for delivery. All right, move 11. I want to take a look at this well play game, Aliaki against Osip Bernstein from their match in 1933. Game number four, the last game in the study. All right. Highly recommend going over Alyakin's games. Uh, I, I really found it inspirational. When I studied Alyakin, when I really started going over his games, I was already a master, but it was so inspiring to me um, that it just made me really, really motivated to play like him. And I had some very successful results for a time. Um, basically playing, um, playing, white, playing white with D4. In my opinion, is is the most inspiring part of Alyakin's game. But you can also look to his E4 games. You know, especially. I think he was a better player with White. He was just great, of course, all around. So Osip Bernstein against Alyakin. Let's take a look. Welcome everybody to the stream. Paris Hilton. How does that come up? There was there was a commercial for like uh yeah Pizza Hut recently somewhere I noticed delivery but then I checked and there's no Pizza Hut within anywhere close to where I live. All right, so E4 E5 Osip Bernstein. Okay, this is an Osip Bernstein study. Osip Not that famous of a player. He was one of those guys who was basically not a punching bag. I mean, he was too good to be called the punching of those guys who would just always finish last. But he just never played like a household name compared to the others from his time. Um, Bernstein versus Alyokin here. Flip the board. Alright, we're going to have to watch the mom. The mom has to stay. Unless she has to go somewhere important. E4, E5. I've got my mom on the webcam. Knight F3, it's not a webcam. I mean, you know, Amy. We have a code name for the... This is this is the code name. We have to say it. The former owner of my... <laughs> Without it freaking out. So we have, we have to have code names for that app. Knight C6. Knight C3. Just popping in for a tiny bit to say hello. Yellow Dragoon. The other dragon was announcing he has <clears throat> a very nice feeder rating, getting up there to 2300. So that's awesome, man. We, we wish you the best. Um, I wish I could get back to playing. You know, maybe there's a chance I'll get back to playing again once I get back to Budapest in in a couple weeks. I'll get to play some team games again. All right. So anyway, move eleven. Bernstein against Alexander Alyokhin. Knight of three, knight c six, knight c three. Yeah, this move is irritating. I think that the the four knights is irritating. Um, it's irritating anytime white does knight c three, knight f three. I do like playing against the four knights scotch, the scotch four knights. Cause I think that's nothing. This is an experimental move. I probably established, but it it looks wrong basically. To play bishop before, I mean, it's, it's a move that looks a little bit, a little bit experimental, a little bit risky for black. So, I would pretty much recommend playing, you know, the standard knight f6 here. Um, like people play g6, which is a move that I like against the scotch, actually. A lot of people don't even know about this. But I think that g6 is a legit defense against the scotch. So, kind of like this variation. Steinitz played this for black. So, 
a kind of uncommon variation you can use in, in the stock proper as well. I mean, white just plays, white just plays d4, then you take play g6. I mean, there's obviously issues with it. You know, it has its it has its drawbacks, but um, I find that a lot of players, particularly you know, if we're not playing against Sky Angel thing. Basically, people who play white up until even above master level in some cases don't really have like something prepared against G6. So that's also an option here. But bishop b4 is kind of a weird move. Um, obviously, white can play knight to d5, but Bernstein just chooses to develop here kind of romantically with bishop c4. Nothing wrong with that. F6, castles, castles. So we're just transposing to a rather unusual variation, I would say, at this point. I don't know much about this at all. I mean, this disposition is just rarely reached because the move order is so uncommon. Um, so three, we're going to end up in a in a scotch or sorry, a four knight bishops on c4 instead of b5, which actually looks kind of over white, truthfully. I mean, it almost seems like it's better here on c4 than on b5. Of course, you can't double the pawns, but the bishop itself is better placed. Um. So bishop takes c3, b takes c. We're playing in like Rubinstein style. If bishop was on b5, you would have like the most famous standard of you know, the of the four knights on the board. But now, um, I don't really like Black's choice here. If you look at the opening explorer, there's a seven. Again, not because there's anything wrong with this position, but the mover is kind of unusual. So, Alyoka decided to be five here. I think that it's wrong in principle because White has the bishop pair. You know, these bishops could do a lot of damage. As the bishop. So, I think that from Black's perspective, the best thing to do is to kind of calm those bishops down, keep the structure fixed, and I think it would be better just getting my vote here if you say d6. You can also play. Capablanca style. I mean, Capablanca Rubinstein. Those guys. BC, Queen E7. You see some, someone play this. I mean, this is the idea to play Knight D8. So, Kyle Gabor was, was white, actually, against Jordan and Ivan. This is a very old game from 1989. But Queen E7, you're going to play D6 anyway, so there's no particular reasoning, really. I mean, D6, I think, I, I like. So, D5 is weird. Um, I think it's it's not really the best. But let's see. So you force white to give up their strong point on e4. But I don't think it's worth opening those two bishops up. You know, I think a skilled player here with white is going to prove an advantage based on the power of those bishops. Eliminate them. So knight takes d5, bishop d2. Queen e1 is a move there as well. Bishop d2. Magnus, Carl Magnuson. Master from the Boylston Chess Club, circa 1991. He was actually on my stream once. <laughs> like, he visited this guy, Carl Magnuson. He was a 2200. Little did we know his name was a four. Was a predictor of the future world champion. Um, funny stuff, but, but anyways. Queen d1, bishop d2, bishop g4. Bishop g4, active. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said there. Maybe this was a stupid... Queen E1. Agarov. Obviously, the downside of Queen E1 is that you face off with a rope potentially on, along the E aisle. Reverse Scotch. Yeah, that's a way to look at it. I never thought about it that way. Interesting. Interesting perception. Your infinite flash. You're right. Essentially, it's like a reverse Scotch. Pass 199. Welcome. Isn't it funny that there was a master named Carl Magnuson? Hold on, guys. I'll be right back.
Alright guys, I have to I have to pause the stream. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pause the stream every once in a while to kind of check on my mom, so Queenie one is interesting. But okay, Queenie one is a bit weird. What else can we do here? That's about it. Okay, let's so let's see. Bishop d two, Bishop g four, played by Carl Mag Magnus Carlson. I thought that, I thought I saw some Magnus. Game. Okay, not this position apparently. Magnus played this, but something else. Okay, Magnus played another move. King h eight, perhaps. Let's see. He did. He twice played in two thousand five. Oh no, same game against Jurhus. Okay. Now, this is this is before even this is a long time ago. Before even I played Magnus, he was already twenty five forty eight, but that was that was like Magnus Light back in the days, two thousand five. Okay, this is just uh, I don't know. All right, whatever. It's an old game. So Bishop G four here. I don't mind H three, but Bernstein just decided to play a really so good move. Queen D six. This is a good move as well. Um, efficient, not creating weaknesses. B one. We have a problem there, knight b6. And now if bishop b5 attacks the pawn at e5, not really, though. So so he could have played bishop back to b3. I mean, if he, like, bishop b5 is a hollow threat, then that's the problem. That's the problem. So this is a threat. You're not really threatening anything. You're not threatening to really take on c6 because there's too many concessions. Um, Bob's going back to normal recovery, man. It should be three. Obviously, Bernstein, you know, isn't happy to block his rook. But, all right, we'll see. What happens here? It should be five. And now rook on a to e8. Someone I was working with today did a similar thing. Was that you, Acerbate? With rook a e e1? Maybe one of my other students. I mean, this leaves the rook on f8 locked in. Kind of has to be careful that this rook actually gets into the game. Um, rook on a to e8, and then bishop takes c6. So he's smashing up the pawns. I would think that Alucin would consider here just sacrificing a pawn, but I guess it doesn't work. So is is rookie eight a mistake? You could just play f six. Sorry about the board there. The f six is the simplest move. I gotta turn the engine off. Sorry guys. This engine is gonna kill it. Engine lag, laggy. Yeah. So I mean, I'm thinking like f five to play aggressively. Rook on a to e8. Bishop takes c6. Now, obviously, if queen takes c6, the problem is some combination like knight take 5. I assume. Facing this. But that's not clear to me. I mean, bishop takes d1, knight 6. This should be basically okay for the black actor. You would just take on c2. So I'm not getting this. Do you guys get this? That should be okay for black. No entiendo. Um, I'm not getting... What am I missing? I mean, knight takes e5. Bishop takes d1. I guess I'm missing something. Knight takes c6. Rook takes check. Bishop takes. Okay, here we have a problem. No. I'm not understanding this. I mean, why, why is this bad for black? Does anybody have a suggestion? Windows 95. I'm running a Pentium 3. I have no idea what that means anymore. 
Bishop takes c2. I mean, I just... This is great for black. That's my question. Like, why wouldn't he take with the queen on c6? I'm having a difficult time understanding this. Why would black not take with the queen on c6? I mean, after that, if knight d5 doesn't work, the story is, then black has a great position. I mean... Was he judging this some sort of draw that he did? he didn't like something was draw out this position perhaps like bishop takes d1 knight takes d6 bishop takes c2 I mean I don't, I don't know this looks good it looks like black might be like winning a pawn actually at the end of the day I I don't really see anything for white here so I don't understand um that's weird let's go back and just double check with the the, the oracle, if indeed it's it's correct, like you play like queen takes. No, the computer spotted a problem. It doesn't like queen takes h3. What? Well, that's weird. That's some seriously crazy stuff right there. H3, bishop takes f3. The end has a problem with this ending for white. I mean, black having a problem here. So, so C problem, the B7 pawn is a problem. That's pretty subtle. That is pretty subtle, I admit. Um, it's possible that white really is better. Because we have two, two concrete. Let me turn the engine off again. That's a nice point. Wow, look at that. H3. You've got to the end game here. That's a really, really nice and subtle point. Subtle ego. I mean, on the surface, I thought, okay, everything's fine. You know, Black's doing well. But we have a problem. And it may be related to the Rook move. Like, if you go back at it, when White played Rook on A to E8, you know, a move that I thought was controversial. He just played Rook F E8 instead. Maybe we wouldn't have any of these problems. It went back here. We have another issue now. Well, then you can retreat the bishop back to d7 or something like that. The computer really likes the, the bishop pair. But, okay. Let's go on. So a e8, bishop takes d6, b takes c6. So probably this is correct now. At least you can just decide to keep the queen on. Um, not not go into that kind of end game. It's a great decision. C4. We have structural problems. We had to break e4 potentially at some point. Knight plays a4. Which is a really weird move. Out on the side of the board. Specifically, um, I guess there's c5. You have to worry about bishop e4. But, I mean, this move is pretty amazing. If people would sit there, I'd be like, okay, I'm playing knight d7. But deal with like rook b7 type of moves. What's here? You just arrived. Wait. You just <laughs> at the stream. Um. This is, this is a bit weird for me. Knight a4. Okay. It's basically knight versus bishop. If we count this as an exchange here on f3. Welcome, guys, to my stream. We're analyzing and, um, you know, some other games, you know, just by where that appears. This is an Osip Bernstein versus Ali Khan you can game. Um, queen e2 looks kind of weird, but that is a problem where to put the queen and not get out of the, you know, the pin is bothering him a lot. He wants to play queen e4. But that's not even a solution. I mean, if queen e4 or f5, so I'm not sure what queen e2 really achieves. And play f5 anyway. Okay, I get it. So he went here. Materialist. This is a weird game. And now e4. Clearly, if queen takes this 8 appears to win a piece. So... Opposite color bishops favor the attacking side of the initiative. Um, and blacks making good use of their palm side. 
I don't know if the audio is glitchy, it should be. Alright, so... We allow it. Yeah, I'm not sponsored commercially. I'm MRX. D takes E4, Rook takes E4. Queen takes A7. And obviously, Bishop takes F3, G takes F3. So a lot of takes in this game, and there's no more Rook A8, you know, to defend and then A4. Basically, the whole game was like calculation based. I wonder what the time control was. Probably really long. I mean, this game was played in 1933, so. Not clear what kind of time limits there were on the moves. Rook e1. I can't basically guess any moves in this whole game. But now we're left in a situation where it looks like the white king is not as safe as the black king. But the black pieces aren't really in the vicinity of the white king yet. The knight is notably problematic on a4. I was skeptical of that move when he played it, to be quite honest. I, I don't know the result of this game, so I'm totally not even sure who's going to win. Um, it's not a game I've analyzed before or seen. I don't think I've ever even seen it. Percy Hepworth said, heavy snow has arrived. Good thing they don't have snow in Chicago. Knight b6, c5. More tactics with bishop b4. So queen g6 check. Now, the deadly queen and knight combination, that could be a problem here. The white king is not safe. Black has the queen-knight combination. Th those are the factors that are really really standing out to me here. It looks like black is seriously better. But on the other hand, there is an outside pawn that can just promote to a queen very quickly. So black cannot waste time. I mean, we're basically threatening knight f4 with mate on g2. I'm not sure it's too easy to defend against that. Um, sorry? Is chess this old considered of lower dubious quality by today's standards? Absolutely not, Bob. I mean, we, we looked at a game... I, I looked at games, like, from the first World Championship match with uh, Spectacular Camel two weeks ago like i mean from the late 1800s a lot of the games are basically almost as good as from today in some cases i think they're absolutely valuable if you ask carlson i mean he'll agree he has huge respect for like classic classic master games um i think that that all the all the games from like maybe the late 1800s onward have have a lot of value um all right so queen h5 hold on guys be right back Yeah, so I mean, there were quality games. I mean, many, many good games. Not all of them. I mean, on average, of course, the quality isn't as good as today's games, but amongst the best, best players, it's amazing how well they played for that time. Now the audio is great. Well, that's weird. All right. Finish my coffee. Maybe that will help. So this looks tremendous for black, but I'm missing something here. Okay, so it's rook takes f8 check. You know, queen b8, queen c7. Everybody sees that except for you. Turning off the engine. So the engine's actually affecting the audio. That's that's surprising. Yeah, infinite flash chess. I mean, that's what I was getting to. There was this line in the um, in the Berlin defense where white plays like rook e1. And that variation, which is still popular today... I mean, basically, you see players like today still playing like the first 18 moves of of like Zuckertort against Steinitz from the 1880s. I mean, that's crazy, you know, literally like 130 year old 
theory is still relevant, you know, today. Um, maybe harder to predict how the kind, yeah. I honestly never really analyzed that many of his games as black. I, I, I've appreciated more of his play with white. Um, and it's been a long time since I really looked at his games, but... He's not an easy player to emulate. I really appreciate his play in the opening, um, especially with the white pieces. The king in the center. That outside eight pawn, money in the bank for white if black doesn't score a touchdown here. Now it's a race, right? H pawn against a pawn. A very interesting end game, but it looks like C4 will probably happen. And then the knight gets displaced. It's possible the white's actually better. I mean, the, the king might end up being an advantage in the center. Both sides have the king in the center. I don't think white's getting made it. So I guess at the end of the day, he's not even worse here. Right about now, I would think that it would be time to Mr. A for Mr. A pawn to start coming down the board. I'm not really sure why not. I guess he doesn't need to worry about the c5 pawn. That's irrelevant. Um, so I, I think it's time to go with the a pawn. Now the computer clearly likes a4. This is a weird move. I mean, bishop c3, we need to score this, this a pawn down the board. We need to score a touchdown. Super Bowl is coming on Sunday. So I don't understand bishop c3. He doesn't even take the pawn on c5, of course, because of bishop b4. Anyway, it would be irrelevant even if he won it. Uh, so I guess, you know, this move isn't bad at the end of the day. Um, a4 here. At this point, if I were black, I'd be like, man, if I get a perpetual check, I'm just, like, very, very thankful. g5. I don't know. Ask your dad, Bob. How'd your bet go with your dad? So a5, g4, a6, g takes f3. Wait, what was, what was I talking about? Baseball. I'm confused. I forgot that you were, you were talking about baseball. You we were talking about betting with your dad. That was baseball. That was like the World Series. I'm totally on another planet. Okay. Bishop takes f6, check. Queen f6, queen e3, check. King f7. And now if we just draw this game... It should be a draw, right? Obviously. Ooh, that's awkward. It should be a draw. I really hope no one lost this game. That would be sad. No reason to lose here. He is kind of messing around, though. I mean, you think... He is restricted, though. To that pawn on c6. Man, that's nasty. I would assume this is a draw. But you might have to go on active defense mode. Oh, man. It became a really torturous ending for black. Counterplay. Oh no. Yeah, so but I think that basically Alyokin just kind of lost it in the ending. Um, it wasn't necessarily winning position for white at all. You know, it seems sort of random. He just misplayed the end game. But it was a good struggle. Thank you for submitting an interesting game. Um, I feel like White was very lucky to win, though. He had the bishop, but I don't think it should have been enough to win. It really, I felt it should have been a draw. It was just a fail, end game failure for Eliakin. Um Not really known as a great end game player. You know, he was good at everything, but it wasn't like his forte, you know. Um, all right, let's... More of an attacking player. Let's go to the next game. So we got Chestosterone in the mix for a submission. Just 
just call you Chesty. <laughs> All right. Active defense. Attacking defense back then. Well, there weren't very many books available, you know, to players at that time, like today. So, I mean, I imagine that to have 10 chess books would be like a big library back in the early part of the 1900s. Okay, let's go on. So the next one is Uber. I mean, Merle Dixon. Yeah, it's very suspicious. I mean, it just gets weirder and weirder, basically. Uber Driver submitted his game 13 hours ago. And Merle submitted his game 13 hours ago. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no, not that guy again. Man, he needs a life. All right. That's like a bad troll. I mean, there's no excuse for bad trolling. Right, Bob? Um, at least find something relevant. Uber driver is next. Sicilian defense, so is an attack. Oh no. Uber driver is playing with the white pieces, the white bits. I think it's some kind of stupid reverse psychology thing. I don't know, man. I wouldn't worry about it. Don't don't analyze it too deeply. There's nothing there. Nothing there to make sense of, Bob, I'm afraid. Um, it's like a one-trick pony, you know? There's one-track mind, and that's the only thing that they can try to fit the round peg into the square hole. That's as deep as it gets, man. E4, C5, Knight F3. Okay, so this is Uber Driver, a.k.a. Merle Dixon. Could you analyze the game of mine played against an FM? Full we'll thing. If we have time, um, if we have time, I will do it. But I'm mostly doing the subscribers. If we have extra time, man, I would I would throw you in next. So, would love to see it if we have time. Knight F three D six guys support the stream and drop in a donated fifteen hundred. Wishful thinking. We're a little bit low on bits this week, so I drop in a donated to support the cause. Five hundred bits today. Um. Thank you so much. Merle, I think, with 100. So U Uber, a.k.a. Merle, played e this game with white. D4, C takes D4, Knight takes D4, Knight F6. Actually, I'm just kidding. Merle's coming up next. Um, Knight C3, A6. We've got a Sozin with B5. Okay, now B5. Um, I think that B5 is bad because of Bishop D5. Someone on sound donated 100 bits. And Bob actually donated a gift sub to Wolf Singh. That was cool, Bob. Really nice. See, Bob's a good guy. He's a good guy. Very generous of Bob to donate a gift sub um, to Wolf Singh. Chicago Open. Speaking of Chicago, how's it feeling right about now? Bishop c4, so b5 is bad because of bishop d5. This is the, the trick here. At least that's what I was taught by the books. Um, here. Maybe it's overrated. Knight takes d5. And now e takes d5. Christian Bauer lost against Kempinski in 2000. My friend Michael Hoffman drew with black. Ian Rogers. Is this overrated? That's the question. Maybe it's overrated. I can't remember who I should thank, but the reason I ended up on the stream permanently is someone donated a sub and then I got hooked. Wow, really? Someone on sound? That was probably Bob. It was either Bob or was it Merle? Probably Bob or Merle, because those are the guys who actually donated the most um you think it was turkey farm it was turkey farm wow it's a great reason a great reason to donate subs guys we get more friends permanent friends here on the stream um that's cool i had no idea about that actually someone on sound 
I'm not sure if you ever mentioned it before. So bishop d5. Hmm. Maybe bishop d5 is overrated. Let's see what the oracle says. Oracle loves bishops, so it's not down with this at all. Mm-hmm. Wow, okay. So b5 is just then it has complete transpositional value. I mean if you if you can play b5, then there's no reason not to play it right away, basically. You just play e6 next and transpose into the main line. That's weird. Like, why doesn't everybody play b5? There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, apparently. Funny. Alright. So, bishop d5 overrated. Maybe we should analyze that more, but there's no time now. So, I just want to see the game. Bishop b3, e6, castles. Okay, so... Right. Also, queen f3 is interesting here. And there are people who play bishop g5. The castle is the main line. Um, then bishop e7, usually. I don't like b4 for black. I had a really nice game. I think even Anand has played b4, but I had a really nice game against this guy where I, who's actually been on our stream. National Master. Um who chooses to remain anonymous, Mozart. Uh, Mozart is a national master. Uh, he he lost a game against me with like knight a4, bishop d7. I think this is... There was a game where he, he grabbed the pawn on e4. Something like f4, knight takes e4. I got this vicious attack with f5. It was just murderous. Um, something like this years ago. But, okay, castles here... Bishop b7 is kind of a new move. This this is... I don't know anything about it. I've seen this recently. Um, I've seen it a couple times mentioned somewhere. But I, I don't know. Traditionally, this move was never considered to be like legitimate because I guess it people are scared that it will weaken your diagonal uh, defense of e6 and f7. But maybe the computer likes it. So this is known. Um, I think in Blitz, I might have played like f4 here and just gone for it. But it looks like rookie one. Because with rookie one, you start to introduce these sacrificial ideas with knight to d5. I had a book, a really good old book, on the Sozin. I guess by like Harding, one of these English authors in the 70s. It's like Batsford, old Batsford chess opening books. And uh, the Sozin book was where I first learned the system for white. But, I mean, this is a very standard kind of motif. You know, playing knight d5 as, as a, like a long-term sacrifice. So in, in the case of like b4, I mean, yeah, you just sacrifice a piece here and the, the attack would be extremely, extremely detrimental to black's health. Um, all right, let's go back. So bishop e3. This is starting to look like the kind of situation where, you, you know, he might be able to try to take that pawn with or without the possibility of b4, like b4 here. I'm not quite sure. I guess there are tactics on b6, like knight a4, knight b6 type of stuff. But how does this actually work? Martin Olesen. This guy was living in the United States. I guess he's like a Danish master. Um, okay, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4. So, I'm not convinced. Dr. K-E-D-G. Dr. A-B-C-D. Anyways, um, I'm not convinced by this. I, I have doubts about Uber Drivers Bishop E3. I don't think that it's thematic. Somebody actually sacked a bishop here. Yeah, I don't think I like that either. Um, F4, though, may not be that good. I think I had a blitz game with this. So it looks like rookie one is best. Anyway, opening opening school is over. We'll just see the game. Bishop E3, Bishop E7. Now, when you do bishop e7, now we have the sacrifice, because g7 goes with check. So this is a very important moment when you play the black side of the Sozin. You have to know about this trick, and basically, a sacrifice that didn't work a move ago when you were less developed now works for white, because it's like, you sack on e6, take with the knight, get two pawns, then get a third pawn with check on g7. And in most cases, that's very bad for black. It's too much. International Master Elliot Winslow, who I did... Um, I did commentary with back in the day. He's a good guy. Unfortunately, he's a he's a backgammon player, very bright guy who um, he suffered 
what was it? Um, I think he had a heart attack or something at one point. And he's recovered from that. But I don't know how he's doing nowadays. This was a while back. Um, bishop takes e6. Fe. Knight takes e6. So Dima. I mean, this looks like a very strong attack for white. But Dimitri couldn't convert. I mean, I wouldn't want to touch this position for black. Well, this is actually what happened. So they're following the Gurevich Winslow game. King f7. Now knight f5. And Elliot played b4. Carl Winslow's brothers. Now he's a really, really good backgammon player. And, and he actually played... Elliot played some poker too. Started to get into poker too. But I think he lives in the Bay Area. I'm not really uh, familiar with, with California too much. Haven't been out there a lot. Like you, Bob. Um, all right, so B4. Novelty. Varying from, from Winslow, who played Queen E6. And miraculously drew against Dimitri. But even Dimitri was young back then. Those guys were, were young back in 1981. Um... Okay, so Dimitri, longtime resident of Chicago. He did a funny thing one time <laughs> when I saw him playing this lower rated guy who offered him a draw. Dimitri's a really kind of well mannered, polite sort of person, but this guy offered him a draw. I won't mention any names. And Dimitri just like couldn't believe it. You know, Black was just like, he was just clearly better. And so he didn't know what to do. And, uh, a couple of people were spectating and Dimitri just like just couldn't believe that somebody offered a draw in this terrible position he just didn't answer he just sort of looked around behind him and stuff like to make like <laughs> he couldn't he was looking for where this draw offer was coming from another board or like you know maybe it was someone on the next next table it was so inappropriate that he just was just jokingly looking around like where could that draw offer possibly be coming from <laughs> um funny guy okay b4 enough with stories knight a4 apparently a mistake according to the engine but it's hard to play this this does look a little out of play maybe we'll win back in exchange but we lose the initiative we lose the attack um here see your channel's ban history i'm gonna be right back guys one sec
Welcome back guys, sorry for the delay. No complaints. What is up? So I didn't leave the engine on, that's good. <laughs> I was afraid I left the engine on. I would freeze the whole stream. All right, we've got another notification from Wolfsing. So Wolfsing, yeah, Wolfsing submitted his game. All right, so that'll be, that'll be good. Wolf is on there. Um, or Lova raided, oh man, she missed me. That's awesome. Or Lova raided. But just, she's still here, maybe. I thought she, she, like, raided and left. Just a notification. Are you just making that up? No, she was here with a party of 37. Wow, that's awesome. 37. Crazy. I missed it. Maybe she had to leave. She's still here. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Orlova, for raiding. Um, sorry, I had to... I had two things I had to do. I had to help my mom, and I also had to, uh, to get the FedEx... FedEx was at the door, so that's explaining my, my long absence here. Okay, knight a4, trying to win back an exchange, this move. But black can afford to sacrifice an exchange. That's that's the defining thing here. Knight takes e7, king takes e7, knight b6. In general, black could afford to give back an exchange. There is an issue with the king safety for black, though. And I think that's the problem now. Threatening mate, we've got f3. This king is safe, the black king, the other king is not. So unless black has a very large material advantage, um, you know, rather than like going into specific variations, I think it's easier to approach chess in a kind of principled way, which is what I try to do. If we just look at the position and we can evaluate it, we can just realize what's happening here. Um, unless black has a very large material advantage and the queens are off the board, um, or and or the queens are off the board, I think this king is just not safe. White's playing like queen up, rook a e1, and has a massive attack. So this this is very bad. Bishop b7, knight a8. Yeah, okay, we'll cash in for that exchange and then see what's up here. All right, this guy's getting blocked. Blockage. Sorry, dude. Multiple challenges, that's just irritating. All right, let's go back. So, right. Um, two pieces for a rook is nothing. I mean, this is totally crushing. Overall, not a bad game. There was one moment where black was okay, apparently. He chose the wrong square at this point. Well, bishop takes e4 is is, is kind of greedy. Um, all right, let's see what happened. Again, thank you, Orlova Chess, for raiding. We've got 53 viewers now with Orlova Chess's raid, which is awesome. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I missed you. But we are back now trying to get a grip on what's happening here. Anyway, we're at this position after knight takes a8 here, here, rook e1. Yeah, so my, my idea would be to bring the other rook over, probably. Because this one might even go to f2 in some positions where it actually protects g2. So I want to like get my queen up in the game and probably bring the a rook to e1. In other words, queen d2, a very simple move like that, just connecting the rooks. You know what I mean? Like rook f1 almost feels like it's developed here. It has a square to has a couple squares to go to. Rook f2 might be good. But rook e1, all right. Now bishop f4 check, logical, and now the whole thing just falls apart. So he could have gone here apparently and stayed alive. Uh, I still like white. I think that this looks like no safety for the black king. Um, enough material. It's just better for white. It should be just better for white. Massive advantage. 
Even if he plays the best move, basically lost position because of King's safety. Super driver, congratulations, good job. This is not the variation though. He played King D8. It's just no king. He's also playing rook odds, ironically. Black played the whole game rook odds. Bishop takes f3, queen c7, mate. All right, guys, I'm gonna get some get some focus going on here because we had to break up the last game. Had to leave the stream for a minute. Welcome to my subscriber stream. So we're basically going over games uh, submitted by our subscribers. This was Uber Driver, but I think he played well. Um, he played well. He he went for the bishop takes e6 when he needed it, when it's good. And uh, that's one of the, the main tricks in the Sozin. Okay, let's see what's up next. We've got Merle. Merle Dixon. No relation to Uber Driver. Guys, we had a bit we haven't had a bit war yet in the stream. So don't, you know, don't start any of that. Bishop takes f3. Um, yeah, too late for black there. So let's take a look. Merle Dixon. I'd like to know what the player with the black pieces could have done better. Your thoughts on the opening. Okay. Master Sourpuss. Uh-oh, sounds like me. Against Merle the Octopus. Getting hungry. It's not good. Rabbit Hamster. These are the other ones. That was last week's game. Rabbit Hamster against Almost Master. Where's the usual donors? Um, Clash Kid? Where's Jim? Jim, are you here today? Maybe people have lives. Anyway, um, this is Master Sourpuss, whoever that is, against Merle the Octopus. Yeah, Bob, who's the other guy? The Annoying Drunk. I don't even know who you're talking about. Never judge people for drinking, man. <laughs> E4, E6. As I'm, I'm drinking my beer here, you know, so I, I'm not going to be judging people for that. It's a Tarash French. We were playing that for a while with white. Merle likes the French. I like C5. Um, I like C5 because to my mind, I mean, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn is really the best. It's so solid for black. I know that it's popular to play it like a Sicilian with queen takes D5, and John Watson recommends this in his books. But... Um, Honestly, like, this is so tough for white to get a real advantage in these classic lines with, like, take back with the e-pawn, like, Botvinnik. Oh, Nils! Okay. He's too young to call him a drunk. That's not fair. You gotta be at least... You gotta be at least a little bit older. We'll give him some time. Yeah. Alright, so c5, knight ng to f3. Nils is a good guy. I mean, he's got his own his own stream. Martin Wass says, hi, Orlova brought me here. I will send you a game I played against Serbian Chess Hustler. But this is my only win. Um, if we have time, we'll get to it. Queen takes d5 is played a lot by Lenderman. Well, I mean, I would say that queen takes d5 is equally popular to e takes d5, JCS. I would say they're like 50-50. I would even say that maybe queen takes d5 in modern chess is even more popular than e takes d. I mean, if you want to win... Um, I don't know, you know, which is better. If you're playing to equalize, I think that E takes is better. But if you're really, like, trying to win against a lower-rated player, you might steer away from those lines, let's say. If Lenderman is playing, like, the French against lower-rated guys in Swiss system tournaments, maybe you don't really want to play with that structure where white can play kind of boring Karpov style or something. Um, knight on G. Then again, the French isn't really the best opening to play for a win. It's it's more meant to be solid, but you can definitely try with anything. Um, knight on G to F three. Knight F six. So E D five. E D five. D C five. Yeah, I mean this is kind of a classic mistake because this bishop hasn't moved from its original square. It's the same thing in like the queen's gambit. You don't want to take. Um, you don't want to take on C four. And have the opponent play like bishop takes c4 in one move. So this is like a clear inaccuracy. I would think. 
um, for White to play D takes C5. There's a game Adams versus Bereyev. I just don't really get it. You know why? This was an early game. I mean, Adams was strong already by 91. He was extremely strong, 2600. But being one of the greatest modern experts on the Tarash, I guess he hadn't really. He wasn't really cemented as a top player at that point yet. You know, so Adams was still relatively young. In 91. Um, it looks inaccurate to me to play d takes, excuse me, d takes c5 here. All right, bishop takes c5, bishop b5 check, and then bishop d7. This is an interesting moment though, you know, because you can also play, you could even play knight d7. That seems strange here though. I mean, knight c6 definitely. I guess my point is that it's very hard to decide between bishop d7 and knight c6 as a player. With black, um, how do you decide between those moves? I mean, knight c6, maybe I like it in the fact that I like the fact that black is not necessarily trading like pieces with knight to c6. It's kind of like the bishop e5 check Sicilian, um, where black's most solid defense is three bishop d7, like against Magnus's bishop e5 check. Um, so this is more a combative move, knight c6. Then say bishop d7. By the way, this guy here, Rachmanov, um, he's a fantastic player. Like, I really, really like his style. Alexander Rachmanov. Um, cool name, but but I like the way he plays. It's an awesome player. He, I think he has a lot of talent. Um, he, he plays a lot of really solid one-move Karpov-style games. Hold on, guys. Besides just being a cool name, Rachmaninoff, right? Um, Rachmaninoff, this guy is like Karpov Jr. Anyways, let's see what happened here. So, what am I missing in the stream? What's up, Mr. Coffee? You had a bad week? I think about bullshit in life of a supervisor. It's not easy running, you know, a Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, I totally empathize, emp empathize, empathize with you. Bishop b5, check. Bishop d7, bishop d7. Oh man, that's kind of gross. That's really kind of this sort of, yeah, he's just trading pieces. What are you going to do? This is the downside of bishop d7, and why you might choose to play knight c6. One would expect that white, white, white doesn't play queen e2 check there, actually. Another reason why knight c6 is better than bishop b7, I mean, he could play this, basically forcing you to trade queens. I mean... Now it's just nothing, you know? And I think a weak player could be even worse than black with the isolated pawn. I was just, I made that up. I just made that up, Bob. It would be funny though. It would, it would totally, it would totally make sense. I could just picture Mr. Coffee running a Dunkin' Donuts franchise, you know? Stress, man. Hiring new workers. Making sure their their smoke breaks are not too often. All right. Anyways, uh, back to the stream here. So, yeah, this is an inaccuracy. Hakey, hakey. Oh my God, hakey. Wait, this is in two thousand. Hakey was only twenty three sixty. He's a grandmaster from Finland. Um, I played a couple times. I won a really nice game with him when I was black and a Scandinavian. So this is before he was a GM. I played both those guys. 
castles. This is just kind of lifeless. It's totally equal, um, I think. Petrenko against Glek. Glek, a good French player. Bishop g5. The problem here is what we see. This is why Lenderman, as, as JCS mentioned, this is basically why you don't play this line against lower rated players. What's happening in Merle, the octopus here. Fortunately, his opponent is a master, so that goes out the window. If it was like Potser Sourpuss 1800 against Merle the octopus, Merle wouldn't be so happy about this position. The only reason he's okay with this is because his opponent is rated 2250. Um, this game is slow, absolutely, but I mean, chess is, you know, chess is chess. Not all games are exciting. If you, you can't, you have to accept that. But this guy's a very, very solid player uh, who almost never loses. Queen c7, bishop g3, queen c4, an active move. Uh, an unusual position for the queen there. This is, next move is strange for me. I mean, knight d2, I don't know about that. So that looks weird. I mean, just like retreating your knight from f3 is going overboard. I would think even this move, even this move here, like queen d3. Here, fix this, make it a symmetrical structure. I offer a draw, you know, would be totally reasonable for white. Time to offer a draw. The isolated pawn is not a liability here, not so much. Black pieces are active. And now the bishop, garnering the bishop, garnering his pay. And no isolated pawn. Look, guys. Look, mom. No IQP. So it's kind of boring. Yeah, it's a draw. All right. Anyway, um, instructive, though. I think you have to change the way you play for... You have to change the way you're playing according to um, the level of your opponent, if, if a draw is okay or not. All right, let's go back to the list of players here. So someone on sound is next. If I can manage to go much longer without eating, didn't have dinner yet, starving for some reason. Um, okay, so somewhat unsound, what did I do with that? There it is. Wow, okay, what am I gonna do? There it is, Whew, I was scared of that. This game was pretty interesting. It's a line that Smith Moore I've never seen. Esterman doesn't cover in his book. It's also game 14, shared study if it's easier. I think folks on the stream might find it interesting. How to play a little more actively to drive home the advantage. Um, let's check it out. So, someone on sound is white. How to play more actively to drive home the advantage. First of all, let's see. So the Smith Morrow with white. Yeah, that PGN, I thought I was, my head was spinning. Oh. Um, so, yeah, so we got the Morrow normal Morrow move order. Uh, I mentioned on the stream last week by the way, I mean, some people will play like knight f3. What am I saying? Um, what am I talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Some people will play like d4, c takes d4, knight f3, but that's not good because of a6. Just a footnote. Um, this game is 249 moves. It better not be. You scared me, man. You scared me. All right, let's see. So d4. I charge double for games over 100 moves. You got you to gotta like use your, use your game up for two weeks. <laughs> for every 50 moves, it only counts as one game. Um, c3, d takes c3, knight takes c3, knight c6. Okay, so I play this with black. The same line, bishop c4, a6, castles, knight f6, bishop f4. So this is someone on sound's latest try, bishop f4. Basically, white has tried like every possible move in this position. Um, bishop g5, bishop f4, bishop e3, h3, a4, b4, queen e2. Is that is that everything? I've probably faced at least that many moves and a few others. So, it's just like nobody really knows what the best move is. My gut instinct is that white has compensation for the pawn, but no more. Um, in, in the Smith Mora. Particularly this line is a good line for white. But anyways, okay. I feel like I need another line to play with black because I've become too predictable. Um, bishop f4. And 
here black just played e5 i mean there's something to be said for this i guess you know traditional variation where basically white wastes the tempo to make you play e5 but i think strategically it's not a structure i like to play with black you know the backward pawn on d6 uh the hold on d5 even with an extra tempo because you're getting e5 for free i still don't really feel comfortable playing black here um the real question is why black players don't transpose to the alapin why even play against the mora in the first place dude it's a pawn up free pawn my friend no i mean i think it's 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 better i disagree infinite flash chess it's not e e easy to equalize against the Mora. I mean, against the C3 Sicilian. Um, I think it's not that easy. It, it's not that easy. The the Alapin is better than the Mora. I mean, you're just you're you're getting equality for free against the Mora, whereas against the Alapin, it's hard to earn equality. Um, no, I just think that objectively, equalizing against the C3 Sicilian is not that easy, and you have to know tons of theory. Equalizing against the Mora is easy, you know. You gotta, you know, you gotta be crazy to pass up the chance. Basically, my my only tournament where I almost made, I should have made a grandmaster norm. I I didn't make it because I lost to the Mora Gambit. Like the only game I've ever lost, <laughs> maybe the only Mora Gambit I've ever lost in my life, in a tournament game. This really sick, but true. So, anyways, okay. Wow, we're just going postal. See, I don't think this is necessary. Someone on sound. My gut instinct here is that you're getting carried away. Um, and it's not absolutely necessary to play knight g5. I mean, I didn't even consider that move. I have no idea what the complications are after knight g5. But I would think you just like go about your normal business here with bishop g5. Um, possibly just bishop e3. You know, I, I don't know. I just see a position where strategically we have compensation for the sacrifice pawn and i would recommend just sitting tight you know just going here i mean obviously bishop g5 bishop e7 and the pin has no value um so this looks to be like the best probably we just go here we just suck up the tempo loss and accept it you know so i still think that i think that white is fine exactly i agree someone on sound i like bishop e3 the best but I'm not sure about bishop f4. You know, that's the decision you have to make at the end of the day. But this for me is just chaos, okay? White score, not too good. It looks like, of course, the lower rated players are usually the ones playing the Mora. Um, I'm sure Esterman has a great following and he's done a great job, you know, trying to make this opening work. Or shall I say, like, making it work. Esterman found a niche because legitimate players don't play the Mora. Um, and he's showing that it, it's good enough to be played at, at a decent level. Um, whereas before it was always like basically disrespected by all strong players. Um, I mean, I remember when like, I remember when like I saw Elvest lose to the Mora at the Marshall Chess Club. It was shocking. You know, he lost to a young master like Lev Millman. Those days Lenderman played it, Millman played it in the, the 15 years ago. A lot of these young juniors at the Marshall Chess Club used to play the Mora. Esserman also. Um, it's good for a draw with white, <laughs> basically. Knight g5, e takes f4, knight takes f7. So this is just like chaos. And we need a computer to find the way out of the maze here, probably. But I, I would my advice would be not to even enter into this, unless it's just convincingly good for white. Infinite Flash just says Bishop G5 is the Sveshnikov down the C pawn. Well, it seems like that, but I don't think it's quite that good. I think it's not true. I think that it's White has compensation for the pawn. Um, Sveshnikov is different. It's similar structurally, of course. So this is a mistake, apparently. What, 95 just smashes his face in or something? What, what is this? I'm missing something here. 
Well, I mean, basically, Black's just down an exchange, right? I mean, if we can save the knight, he's just down the exchange. We're going to play bishop e6 and knight d5. Not knight d5 right away, I guess. But bishop e6, queen e6, and knight d5. Good luck at Black Castle's queen side. Um, yeah, I mean, this just seems forced. And now you got a castle queen side or something like that. Not easy to trap the knight on h8. I mean, if he could trap the knight on h8 comfortably, everything would be fine. But basically, he's supposed to queenside castle here. With all these open lines, it's a very dangerous game. So this should be terrible. Should be terrible. Can we rescue the knight or not, though? So what was what was it that you phrased this question as, though? Let me let me go back here to my message. I wanna I wanna check this again. You said um, I'd like to see how to play a little more actively to drive home the advantage. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. But I mean, I would just recommend not even going there. Um, so knight d5, rook c8, question mark. He should castle queen side. All right. Well, let's see what happens. So rook c8, he gets out of this somehow. Knight takes f6 check. And that seems a little weird, you know, to play knight takes f6 check. But I guess you're banking on queen h5, right? You see, there's two ways to look at the position, like holistically or just in calculation terms. So this may look good in terms of, wow, I get my queen to h5. But when I see this position and you play knight takes f6 check, in the terms of holistic view of the board, I'm seeing like, well, why would you want to trade a knight on d5 for a knight on f6? I just don't quite get it. Um, it just, it looks disturbing. Um, I just don't understand trading this piece off. So you went on a tangent here. I mean, you went out on this on this like trying to find the forcing variation tangent. So I think that's a bad decision. Try to keep the knight on d5. It looks like your best piece. And probably you, you can build with that knight on d5. But I mean, it looks like you made a mistake far, far later in the game. I'll be right back. So, I mean, I'm unable to calculate this quickly, what's really going on here. I mean, I think the way you played it is okay, too. But I want to find a way, just like rookie one. I mean, something just, just improving the position. You can play knight takes f6 at any time. This is your best piece. And he doesn't really want to take and open up the e-file. I mean, you do have to be careful about knight e5, though. I mean, there definitely is the possibility of him just sticking a knight on e5 and shutting down all your play on, on the e-file. But he can't take on d5, so I just don't don't get it. You know, just build the position. I think this is a strategic mistake. It's like Black's playing the Latvian Gambit at this point. Yeah, no, I think th there's no problem. You're just winning here. Now it's like a tactical endgame. Um, Tactical endgame with back rank weakness. We have to be careful. Do we have knight takes g6? We have rook rook c7 here. Maybe we panic too early. You can play a queen endgame with like rook c7. How about this? Idea, bishop takes h8, rook takes e7 check, queen e7, queen h8. I mean, this has to be... This has to be very, very bad for black. But again, it's not easy. Maybe maybe this is... Uh, 
is defensible somehow. You know, not an easy game, but queen end game up a pawn, no guarantees you're going to win there. Um, but look for better. So the, the end game, easy for the computer to say it's like plus three. You definitely, you definitely looking like you've got g3, h4. And I think that should win. I mean, that should really be winning. Like the creation of two connected pass pawns on the king side. Um, we don't know that we're so crushing positionally. Right. Well, Turkey Farm, I think you just have to learn to feel that with, with experience. You know what I mean? I just can't emphasize enough the importance of the d5 square and the Sicilian. I mean, if you own this square and the Sicilian, it's it's no way to chase it away with a pawn. It's just it's just a kind of like timeless. Um, it's just a timeless concept. You cannot emphasize enough like the d5 square and the Sicilian is is just the most important point. Anyway, so he gets into a tactical endgame. Yeah, uh, it, it could get kind of murky after this. So rook c7 here, and then we don't want to trade too many pawns. I think that we're looking for g3 and h4, and the creation, so a concept. You should be easily winning the creation of two connected pass pawns. Let's see what he does here. Bishop d4. Okay, no threat immediately, but there could be a buildup on f2. So you want to get your pass pawn moving. Again, he's stopping like rook b6, but what about g3 here? Maybe white has f3. That is a little scary. Like white could play f3 and then support it with knight e5 and basically go knight knight g4 and start to threaten f2. So this is going to become an issue. Now you played rook c7, but I think we've seen this in your games before, if I'm not mistaken, someone on sound. I mean, you want to centralize your king here. If you can't play g3, king g2, then you want to play king f1, king e2. And I think they're bringing the king to the center here and negating his threats of knight e5, knight g4 um, look really pivotal. And you're winning. You've got the ability to bring the king to the center. His king is cut off. So he doesn't have that ability to use the king, and you do. I mean, this should have been an easy win. But you have to you have to think about it. I mean, I might have blundered this and allowed like f3 and just realized too late that here we have some technical problems, folks. I mean... We can start going with the H pawn, but here comes the cavalry. And now there could be some real serious issues, like the F3 pawn for black could could be what's getting hammered home here, not white's advantage. You know, so that's fundamental stuff. Just right back. So I think this is very fundamental stuff. I mean, someone on sound is strong enough that, I don't know, this is a fast paced game, five plus three, but in the longer game, I'm sure you'd realize you've got to centralize your king. You actually did it the next move with king f1. So it looks like you're on the right track. Is it a move too late because of knight d3? I think here we've got to start calculating, hey, can that run, like run down? I would start calculating h4 because bishop takes f2 rook d rook c3 and 
now knight b2 i find this a little hard to believe does this work maybe it works that's awkward if that works that saves him knight b2 with the idea of bishop d4 yikes oh my gosh all right um maybe white's still better there but anyways centralizing the king is an important lesson so knight d3 this move yeah i mean i think you need to see your 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 biggest advantage okay you went for the a pawn the a pawn is good too you want those outside pawns here knight takes good move you're still winning but i think you need to have really good technique now you have these outside pawns but they're isolated you know there's no chance of a connected duo basically anymore so it's becoming more technical and then you just dropped a rook that's okay it's not the point so you dropped a rook here i mean king e2 and and you're playing king f3 and you've got the a pawn and the h pawn and four against two i mean it's probably a winning position if, if this was a C pawn instead of an, an A pawn, I would think that, heck, maybe that's a draw, you know, honestly. But the knight is also trapped. It, it just may be trapped on F2. So, obviously he dropped, you know, he dropped a piece with that move. And that was the reason why he was lost here. But it's getting harder. Black improved his position, improved his king. Now it's still a wild position because white still has these outside pawns. He starts moving now. Yeah, bishop and knight are very hard to coordinate. That's why bishop and knight mates are so hard for beginners to learn. Um, they're not easy to coordinate together. Basically, the bishop controls the dark squares. The, the knight has to control the white squares. If you have trouble doing like the mate with bishop and knight, if you're a beginner, maybe it's easier if you look at in that in that kind of context about like color complex or the colors of the squares. But the bishop always has to do the job on one color. The knight has to do the job on the other color. So the knight has to control the white squares. The bishop controls the dark squares. But yeah, this is this is getting difficult now for black to hold. Those outside pawns. Like this move, though. I mean, maybe... Yeah, he was worried about this D pawn. But I think that you can go to G4. Outside pawns. He understands what he's doing here. They're just too far spread apart these are optimal i mean in a situation with a rook against bishop and knight or something like two minor pieces you want those pawns to be as far apart as possible okay overall not a bad game so we've got um time for let's see chestosterone and wolf those will probably be our last two for tonight maybe this last one if we have time let's see all right, this is Turkey Man. But there's a lot to take away from that game. Okay, Schemato. I played this guy, I guess, once. Maybe once or twice. C4. Turkey Farm is black. Guys, thanks for supporting the stream. Andromeda, someone on sound. Someone on sound up to 500. Wow, he donated 400 bits. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. And drawing on someone on sound number one and two for donations. We're missing Dim today. I received your message, yeah. I'll be right back. Guys, we have time for like two or three more games. So we'll take a look at this English opening here. Turkey Farm is black. G6. Thanks again. Oh, Dim is here. I just mentioned him, and he popped up, and he donated 200 bits. What's up, man? Um, good to see Dim in the stream, or Jim. 
So knight c3, bishop g7. Thanks guys for supporting the stream, all three of you guys. And drama to today, someone on sound and and Jim. Bishop g7, dubious. Uh, okay. That's not true. So, e4, d6. C5 is even stronger. Yeah, I agree with the engine here. You should play c5 and, and knight c6 and clamp down on d4. But it's not obligatory. So, d6. Play your repertoire. Basically, if you're playing the king's indian, fine. Um, knight f6, knight f3 castles. And this is really one of the most difficult lines to play against. But I think white has to be a strong player. Um, because h3 is a very subtle kind of positional line. And I don't think that beginners necessarily understand the subtleties of this. So this guy's an FM, though. I mean, I'm not sure how objectively how strong he is. We talked about this the other day. I mean, there are different, all different levels of FMs. They've lowered the category. Uh, require, they basically lowered the requirements in the last 20 years. It used to be the FIDE Masters had to achieve like a rating and maintain it for 27 games. Um, I told the story yesterday about how I did that. And then the U.S. Chess Federation, this was in 1991. Two, the U.S. Chess Federation didn't apply for my FM title back in '92 when I had achieved the the 27 games over 2,300 FIDE, and then I ended up not getting the title until 19, maybe 1991, and I should have got it in '91, and I ended up getting it in like 1993. But anyways, H3, E5, D5. It's a a form of the Petrosian actually Petrosian Petrosian variation. Queen e8 here is an interesting move, and this may be known. Um, it looks a little too early. I mean, you haven't even moved your knight yet, you know, so probably queen e8 should, should probably be played only um, once you've played probably a knight maneuver already. Because I feel like with queen e8, if he just goes Tomaszewski style and goes g4 on you, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure. There are some games here. There's a Rajabov game. Rajabov, one of the players on the top who's capable of playing the King's Indian. I don't know if he still plays it. G4 seems very logical to me. Having seen Queen E8, you know, um, we don't get many King's Indian games to analyze here. I'm a somewhat of a knowledgeable expert, but not playing it a lot these days. Um, okay, Queen E8, Bishop E3. And now knight h5, and this probably this transposes to something closer to, to the truth. Queen e8 is actually indirectly defending the knight on h5, so I think this makes some sense here. It looks like white has c5, possibly. Um, but I think you should go back and, and look at other lines. Uh, let's see. So knight h5 right away. Knight a6 right away is another idea that's very interesting. Obviously a5. Once I lost against a German Grandmaster uh, playing this, tra transposing to a kind of Petrosian variation uh, with, with Bishop G5. But, all right. Let's see. Queen E8. Interesting idea. I think the move order is a little bit funny. Yeah, I think I think exactly. I mean, if you play knight Queen E8 and you can't play Knight H5, then Black's position is a little bit weird. But once you get to Knight H5, it, it seems kind of reasonable. G3. Dmitry uh, Gurevich, who I mentioned earlier in the stream, one one player who comes to mind who used to play this sometimes with white. But again, I think that the H3 system is a very subtle line. And uh, you have to have a good amount of understanding, especially of positional chess. So, yeah, F5, very consistent here. It looks like uh, what's white's last move, so the G3. G3 may not be necessary. But it's tricky for white. What should he play? Maybe like knight d2? Then f5. Um, that's the point. You know, the queen defends this guy. So in the event of f5, you have e takes f5, g takes f5. And the, the queen is defending the knight on h5. That's the whole idea behind black's position. And playing queen e8 in tandem with knight h5. So g3. Kasparov has a famous game where he did like a knight sacrifice. He had knights on a6. And somehow he did, like, in this variation, exactly. He did, like, knight before, knight f4. Some sort of shadow threats against the king there on e1. Um, but making that all work tactically is tricky business. So f5, e f5, g f5. And then white just starts making random moves, it looks like. With bishop g5. I don't know what that does. 
I I really don't have a clue. I mean, I guess he's afraid of f4. So he just decided to stick his bishop on g5. Where basically it won't be under attack. But white is losing losing the the battle for development here. He's also got got to be faced with this very powerful duo of pawns. So I mean, basically white just traded off his center and he doesn't really have anything to show for it. So if the flash chess says white will want to play like knight g5 or knight h4, exactly. Even knight h2. I mean, you can ask Dmitry Gurevich. Like, oftentimes this maneuver is actually played in these type of variations. I'm trying to go to g4 there. So I'm trying to draw some arrows there. Sorry, guys. So I'm going to keep running out of the room. This uh, this g3 idea, we're playing knight h2, knight g4. Oftentimes, that's a useful resource. There's an Indian grandmaster who goes for an early bishop g5 here. Well, I mean, bishop g5, I don't know what you're talking about, JCS, but obviously you can play bishop g5 and play it like a Petrosian system where you're just playing h3. All right, anyway, so we'll get to the game here, get over this game and on to the next one. g3, I like this. White just gives up their center. Then this move is sort of random. Computer busted this move. This was like question mark, but I mean, this, this is a totally normal way of developing here for black. So I don't see anything wrong with knight a6. Um, Basically, the engine really likes the idea of f4 here, but I don't think that's intuitive. You're obviously afraid of, like, g4, locking the position. So it must all hinge on a kind of long forcing variation like this and calculating that out. Um, I'm not quite sure how this would work. It would require a lot of calculation, and I'm really not certain what's going on here. So I don't give you a question mark for playing knight a6. I think that's... Transposing to a master game, actually. Bishop e2, which is weird, but but reasonable. Um, knight c5 now. I'm a little concerned about the knight on h5. So maybe you should think about just like bringing it back. I mean, this this is... It's done its job. It allowed you to play f5. You've got to watch out for tactics. On the other hand, I mean, if he does something like knight takes e5, maybe you have the counter. Counters, which is a knight takes g3, knight takes e5, knight g3. Black's good to go. So probably knight c5 is okay um, here. And then that's weird. I mean, I, typically you don't castle kingside in this type of line where you're where you're playing g3. Sometimes you maneuver the king to like f1 and g2, you can walk it over. But I would say you don't generally castle kingside having weakened the h3 pawn. So this is a crazy move. Um, crazy, crazy move here. We'll be right back. So this this is crazy for White to castle queen side here, absolutely crazy. He's just gonna lose h3. He's probably gonna lose the game directly due to that. So that's insane. I mean, yeah, you could have the king on h2 and probably think about getting away with it, but it just looks it looks extremely dangerous. H3 is just not protected here. I mean, there has to be a there has to be a combination. Maybe e4, maybe f4. This perhaps is a little bit slow. He has time to play king h2. 
I don't know about queen h5. That looks a little weird with a bishop on e2. So <laughs> this is probably not bad for black. Beautiful point of that move, though, bishop h4. And I think he was thinking about that when he played bishop g5 to begin with. This is kind of a weird move, bishop h6. Because I think the bishop has a lot of potential um, on the g7 diagonal. So if I'm you here, um, I think you should just think about maybe bishop d7, developing your pieces, connecting your rooks. Or a5, maybe, to stop b4. But that's probably not good, because white has threats of knight b5 here. And I think you've got to be careful of that. You have rook f7. You gotta watch out and make sure you have a way of guarding the c7 pawn. That's obviously the weak point in black's position. So, bishop h6 seems like a strange move. Um, you're preventing knight g5. Yeah, well, I just don't see that as a threat here. Um, you've got this really well covered. So, even if you were to play knight g5, you could just play h6. He comes in, you take it, he takes it, you take it, and you're just up a pawn. You've got e6 covered, but it's definitely something to think about. Um, it's not that bad of a move. You also have the possibility of like king h8 and maybe trying to get something going on the g file. Here, king h2, king h8. So that's what you're doing, basically. And now e4. The e4 better be well calculated, because you don't want your pawns to become stagnant and fixed. So e4, letting him into a good square there on d4. You better have work this out. Um, does f4 work? Is it is it good? That's the question. If it's good, okay, I'll accept this as an answer. But you don't want to let this guy into d4 unless you have a good reason. It looks like you might have a strong enough attack. Rook g1 bothers me a little bit. I mean, it looks like he can kind of just hold the queen side. I'm not sure how disruptive that is, though. Like, here, here. I mean, that is kind of bad for white. That's going to seriously reduce reduce his options. Um, so this is pretty strong, admittedly. B4 in there. Good. And obviously the white squares are just collapsing. You see around the white squares in this position. Terrible for white. Can you break through, though? Well, now you just have a monster pass pawn, too. Wow. What an idea. Nice job. Knight g4 check, sacking a piece. Wow, that's incredible. His queen is almost trapped. He literally has to play takes and like queen b1. Not to lose <laughs> not to lose on the spot. Wow. Beautiful sacrifice. So queen b1 is like literally only move. What did you plan here on queen b1? Because I didn't see a decisive idea. I mean, obviously a rook f2 check. This has to be good somehow, but maybe we need to get more forces to back this up. Similar to an, an Asturbate sacrifice, I saw one of his games. Maybe it wasn't Asturbate, it was someone else. Um, one of our other followers. But, okay, White just got desperate now and played rook e6. So the interesting try, queen b1. Yeah, so he just blundered his queen. It's over. It was a good struggle, though. Um, I guess there's still play here. You gave up your queen. Yeah, not what you're supposed to do here. All right, he's not just blundering his queen. I take it back. Rook e6. Yeah, you've got a take here. Knight e6. Rook f2 check. King somewhere, like h1. The e4 square looks almost gone. Maybe something like rook c2. It's still tricky, though. It's a little bit tricky still. The white king is not safe. Yeah, you should be winning. So this is actually a blunder, and white's still in the game. I assume this is time time pressure. This is against a fide master. Knight e6, rook f2 check. Let's just see the end. Two pieces for a rook at this point for a very strong pass pawn. Okay, guys, I'll be right back.
Sorry, guys. Um, so this this is not enough. We've got two rooks for the two pieces. Very strong pawn. But admittedly, in, in a fast time control, I mean, I'm not sure what's going on here. Black has the A pawn coming down in an in advantage uh, in addition to this, this D pawn. So when on sound, I'll see you later. Thanks for joining us. Um, okay, I don't know what this was. I'm going to have to... Uh, sorry, guys. Go back to that. Where did this game go? Here. A3, knight takes g6 check here, here. Good job trying to get some counterplay. The computer makes it sound like white's just just winning, but it's not that easy in an actual game. And this A-pawn is very dangerous, so... Maybe there's some mating nets. Wow. Crazy. To, I can't possibly analyze all the possibilities in this. This game was too complicated. So now he has some sort of perpetual. He doesn't. I thought he had a perpetual. Yeah, he does, right? He has to draw a rep, but he doesn't want to do it. He's playing for more. Okay, so he's playing for more. Now you're threatening mate. And then you dropped a rook. Oh man, that's tragic. Good struggle. Okay, thank you, Turkey Farm. Um, the game was a little bit too complicated to really analyze properly in the in the time frame that we have here. More or less like 10 minutes per game. It got really complicated. Um, but I think, you know, you played credibly until the end when it started getting out of control. Obviously, the rookie six moment where you, you were probably winning there. So let's go to uh, Wolfsing, who has actually become a subscriber as of tonight. So Wolfsing wanted to play the other day in our in our viewer arena, but not the viewer arena, but yesterday in the Wednesday stream. He wanted to play but he wasn't a subscriber, didn't you know he had been waiting but didn't get a chance to play. So I'm glad we can actually do this game analysis for him. Um, I think this will be our last one for tonight. I know the other guy wanted to uh, but I don't know if we'll have time. I have too much too much going on here. Um God God Pat God God <laughs> Glod. God plank, I'm stuttering. Um, I don't know who this is. This is a new player for me. Lots of Fide Masters running around. Uh, D4, Knight F6. So Bishop F4. Yeah, man. Uh, the London system is a headache. So I like G6 and E6 and C5. They're all good for black here. Obviously, D5 is a move. E6. Um, E3. This will be our last game for today, guys. I'm going to go through this. Classic London system. C5, C3. Knight c6, all main line, knight gf3. And now you played a6, which is very rare. Uh, I've never seen that before. I'm not quite sure why. We're not really afraid of bishop b5. So, I mean, you could just grab space with b5, but I think you've got to study the theory with bishop d6 if you want to play it like this. The other option is maybe bishop e7 and, and some sort of b6, which I saw Adams play. Maybe there's something to this, you know, trying to play with... With bishop e7, bishop d3, uh, castles. There's this too, knight h5. Um, but this is like the classical old old school variation with bishop d6. This a6 I've never seen before. It looks a little irrelevant. Now bishop d6. So you're just playing a kind of normal line. I don't know what a6 has, has to do with it. Um, less boring. All games are, are exciting. Um... Bishop g3. Yeah, well, Mar Martin, why you're not a subscriber. Basically, I'm only doing analysis with the subscribers. That's that's the point of the stream. It's my subscriber stream. So if you want to subscribe to the stream, I would definitely analyze your game. Bishop g3, castles, knight e5, and now knight e7. Knight e7, it's funny, this happened in a Yu Yang Gui game. This this idea of knight e7, knight f5 is kind of a common maneuver. But I like I don't like a6. I think that black should play like b6 and bishop b7, and then maneuver knight e7, knight f5 instead of instead of a6. Yeah, I, I think this is this is just good for white. So h6 was played here, and I think that weakens your king side. You're not going to be able to play f6 without weakening g6 more significantly. So h6 looks like a bad move. Yeah, I, I don't like a6, and I like h6 less. 
Because H A six is one thing. It's like the queen side, where you're technically stronger. But I think on on H six you're weakening your king side, where white is going to build up this kind of strong stonewall attack type of thing. So you don't really want to move pawns over there. H six F four. And all white has here is a stonewall attack. It's just a good stonewall attack. He can play like bishop h4. Um, absolutely. Perfect play. Knight e7 is a good try, probably, defensively. And the engine doesn't like bishop h4, but I still think it's a good move. Totally natural. This is the problem. Does he take on f5? Uh huh. I don't mind this way for white to play. It's giving up the bishop. But he has no bad pieces. It's two knights, two good knights, and an active bad bishop against a good bishop, a good knight, and a bad bishop. Black is the only one with a bad piece here, the bishop on c8. And that's not helped by the fact that you played a6. Maybe you could play like b6, a5, bishop a6, or something like that to get the bishop out. Um, castles here, bishop b7, rook f3, knight e4. And this exchange of pieces is okay for black, but you're essentially trading... Um, you're a good bishop for his bad bishop. So I think this leaves white with some some chance of an endgame advantage with like a bad bishop against a good knight. Be careful of, of that here. But this changes the position here. Maybe white has to play very, very subtly and very carefully um, to prove an advantage in this game. I think when you take on e4, you're changing the position in black's favor. I don't know if he can live with it, but you should think about maybe trying to live White should think about trying to live with that knight on e4, perhaps. Maybe it's not the end of the world to capture it, but White could try to play around it, I think. It's possible. So the engine kind of agrees with me. It's an unusual situation. Normally you want to eliminate a strong knight like that. Um, he could probably take it. You know, that's what he did. And play rook g3. This is reasonable. Um, and then try to stick a knight on g6. But at the end of the day, like White is, White is worse because you have a protected pass pawn on e4. So at the end of the day, the strong knight is getting kicked with f6, and you just have like an endgame advantage in the, in the heavy piece endgame with a powerful pawn on e4. So I, I think this is okay. Queen h5, suddenly white's playing for attack. Queen f6, this is very awkward. Can we play... Can we play f6? No. Can we play bishop f5? No. So the knight has suddenly become a problem. Wow. So this was a really important moment. You literally have to play bishop f5, as the engine is suggesting there, because you have to play f6, you have to eliminate the knight from e5. So the only way to stop the knight from going to g6 and forking all your pieces is by playing bishop f5. And that's why h6 was a bad move in the first place. If you hadn't played h6, you wouldn't have this problem right now. You could just play f6 whenever you wanted to. This, you see, one pawn weakness with h6 changes the whole game. So king h8 doesn't help. You know, this was a strong move, queen h5. And now now you're forced to make these very awkward moves, queen f6, to support bishop f5, though it, it is a good a good idea. Um, rook f1, and obviously trying to trade queens makes sense, uh, although this might also be good. It's awkward, though. You cannot get rid of that knight on e5. So white, white is again better. Wow, this is a cool move, rook g5. He essentially offers a draw here, and then declines his own chance to repeat the position. Now there's still no f6. So it's really awkward for black. The computer wants to play queen f6, essentially forcing a repetition of position again. If you take, the knight gets kicked out, and that's bad for white. He doesn't want to he doesn't want to do that. You know, this this is very very much nothing. Takes, 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 takes. And white's completely unhappy in this slightly worse endgame. Um, but let's see what happens. So he goes here. The actual game was bishop e6. We still didn't get the knight off of there. And then queen h7. All right, here. And that allows you to play f6. And that's it. I mean, this is just a disaster. We just let the knight get kicked out of e5. So now white is clearly worse. Just chop it off. And then you just have the clear advantage of the protected pass pawn on e4. Very, very strong position. I'm not sure if f5 is necessary, but it's probably not a bad move. Just monster. And now you can break the queen side with b4, essentially. <laughs> so this will be the plan. It's locked. 
but we can open the queen side with b5 or a5, b5, b4. So we have a way to open the game. White will try to play like g4, but I'm not sure if he's going to have enough play here. So just a second, guys. We'll close this up for this for tonight, last game. Okay, guys, we're going to finish this one up. I have too many problems here. So, very strong endgame for Black. Again, powerful pawn here. His attack is limited. He has only g4. But that's going to risk white too. He's going to have a backward pawn on, on the f-file. Black is winning on the queen side with b5, a5, b4. And it's just a matter of time till Black, Black breaks through over there. So, I don't know about rook f6. Okay, neutral move that defends. But the plan has to be a5, b4 on the queen side. The rook g6 is... It's not even relevant. You know, you have to understand what you need to do here. You need to break through on the queen side. This is the only way to do it. So, Martin Wah, thank you for following. Um, yeah. Subscriber game analysis. This is what we do every every Thursday. Rook g6, just a blunder. White missed it, had a chance to win the pawn. So the advantage persists here, but I think that White centralizing the king, you know, in some end games, this is going to help him, particularly if the queens are traded. Um, I think that White suddenly has chances to hold on. The king position might might salvage his position. Um, if you look at the pawn structure, by the way, uh, a lot of people might not appreciate this fact that um, it's really about like who has the larger pawn chain, essentially, or pawn island. Why is Black's position advantageous? I mean, he has this protected pass pawn on e4, but it's not only that. This this queen side structure, the two going forward, the so-called minority attack on the queen side. That's what would enable us to break through. So essentially, black has like two advantages. I mean, there's there's the fact that the protected pass pawn is is a protected pass pawn on e4. There's the second fact that who has the better pawn chain. Essentially, black has a better quality structure because he has the larger uh, pawn island with with a five pawn island. Um, but basically, here you should be clearly better breaking through on the queen side. You're not finding the plan. And you just didn't help yourself. So this is interesting now. He trades queens. And so basically, you can't lose. But you have the same plan I was talking about. The, the chance to break on the queen side. White's only chance is to create a fortress where black pan can penetrate here. Um... I'm not sure if king h5, you know, is going to do anything. Like, we have... What's our plan? We have, like, king g4, maybe. King g4 and g5. So this, this might even work. At the end of the day, though, this is kind of a complicated endgame. He has this threat. If your king were to get, like, really far away, um, 
It would have to be really far away. Basically, your king would have to go to like g3. Or g g4 might even be enough. If you go to g4 and he plays c4, essentially, um, he's going to create a passed pawn. So you can't get out of the square of this pawn. So basically, this area here, if we draw a block, he's going to he's gonna basically play c4 at some moment when you know his pawn will just be four, four squares from queening. Um, your king cannot leave the, the roped off area. Right, that's the point now. So you went outside, you know, the, you can't get back inside the square. This is a nice block here. You cannot get back inside the square in time when you play c4 here. Because your king can't go through f5. So he's breaking with c4 and he's he's back in the game. This saves him. It's really nice. bc, bc, so it's, it's suddenly total chaos. This pawn is just unstoppable. But you also have unstoppable pawns, potentially. So it's a total race now. dc4 d5 this is this doesn't matter and then c3 only chance so we both queen c2 here and then you have like e3 e2 but e3 doesn't work because he gets back in time so you have to play this accurately this was nice king f3 d7 so it's suddenly a draw reminds me of a game i had with someone on sound you both queen and the material is equal agree to a draw it's a fair result the final position um, but I think that you may have been winning that king and pawn game if you had played the other side. This is the one idea that you never came up with in this endgame. Like when you went king h5, uh, when you played this move, right? I mean, what if you come back around the other side? Now it's already too late. It looks like it's already too late. Um, so maybe you shouldn't have played g5 at all. Essentially, you shouldn't have played king h5 at all. Like probably you should come over here and try to do something on the queen side with the break if you can. I'm not sure. This is a complicated endgame, and there may be other plans. But, I mean, to me, the thing to take away from this game is that you should have gone for the minority attack. All right, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining me for the subscriber stream. We'll be back on Friday, uh, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time with uh, Fast Friday 5 plus 3 Blitz with everybody. So everyone's welcome to challenge me on Friday 5 plus 3. It'll be casual. I will see you guys at 12.30. Thanks, JCS, for moderating. Thanks, everyone. Open challenges tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.